What's going on everybody? This is Max the Catfish and today I'm coming at you with 20 satisfactory tips that are never taught to you in the game. You got to figure these out as you play. I think there's going to be something in here for everybody, whether you're just starting the game or whether you've been playing for a hundred hours like I have. I'm still learning new tips and tricks about the game and I'm going to share what I think are the most important 20 tips with you right now. Let's get into it. Tip number one, you can assign items to your hotbar using the zero through nine keys on your keyboard while scrolling over that item in your build list. This is a really quick way to access a lot of the items that you place around your base without having to go into the list every single time and getting items out of it. In addition, as of the most recent patch, you have the ability to switch between multiple hotbars. So I've got a hotbar for belts and conveyor belts. I've got a hotbar for placing pipes, for instance. You can switch between these by default using the Alt key and the scroll wheel. And keep in mind, any of these bindings are changeable in the controls menu. So I prefer actually to have control and the scroll wheel change my hotbars. I've made that adjustment in the menu. In addition, any of the items that are bound to the numbers six through zero on my keyboard are a little far away for me to reach. So instead, I access these using the alt key and the numbers one through five. So you can customize these controls to your liking. So you have quick access to the buildings that you use most frequently. Tip number two, you can replace belts and conveyor lifts, power poles and miners automatically without rebuilding the building. All you need to do is select a belt of a different tier and scroll over the belt you wanna change and click. And this allows you to replace your belts, your power poles, your miners much more quickly without having to deconstruct them and recreate them in the game. Tip number three, when you're placing conveyor poles and pipeline supports, First, when you select the item, you can use the scroll wheel to rotate it by 45 degrees each time. And after you click for the first time, you can raise each one of these up. Specific to the pipeline support, if you now scroll, you can actually adjust the angle of the pipeline support. And this allows you to create some really specifically designed and specifically angled piping for your factory. It's also important to mention that the same thing works when you're placing belts. When placing belts, you can also automatically place conveyor poles. And as you're placing that conveyor pole, you can scroll your scroll wheel to rotate the conveyor pole so that you can get those nice 90 degree angle turns in your base. After clicking for the first time, you also have the ability to lift that conveyor pole up or down a certain distance so that you can line it up with other buildings in your base. Tip number four, when placing pipes and hyper tubes, the R button will allow you to switch between build modes for the tubes. The build mode determines what shape your tube is going to take when you finally place it. Tapping the R button will automatically switch between the different placement types, and holding the R button will bring up a radial menu that will allow you to select the placement type manually. Tip number five is all about foundations and the alignment of your buildings. First of all, if you're building without foundations, you can hold the control key to align the inputs and outputs of nearby buildings. But even better than this is that when you build a foundation underneath your buildings, all of your buildings snap to a grid on that foundation. It's really great for aligning buildings specifically. Placing foundations is one of my biggest tips for those of you that are just starting the game out. A really cool thing that you might not know is you can actually place miners on top of foundations and they will still mine down into the ore at the exact same rate. So this keeps your factories really nice and clean and having a foundation floor, even though you're covering up those ore deposits. Because you're probably going to be placing a lot of foundations, I've got a tip about the best way to place these. When you want to cover a large area with foundations, one of the fastest way to do this is to lower yourself down so that the foundation that you're placing is at eye level. You can use these one meter foundations to sort of drop yourself down. If you drop yourself down two meters, you can place one meter foundations at eye level really, really quickly, much faster than you would if you were placing the foundation from above. Tip number six, at the beginning of the game especially, but even when you're out on an adventure, the fastest way to mine automatically is by holding the E key on a ore deposit. And then while you're holding E, press tab. And this is going to allow you to mine up that resource without having to hold the E key. You can take your hands off of your mouse and keyboard. If you'd like to, you can even press tab again and you'll get rid of the menu screen that comes up. Tip number seven. When you're out exploring the world, you can stack conveyor poles to climb heights easily. Just make sure you don't fall off the other side. 
Conveyor poles have a ladder on either side of them. And if you're out in the world exploring, you can stack these up and you'll have a ladder that brings you all the way up to climb big heights. Another way to do this is by bringing enough materials with you to build storages and industrial storages, which also have a ladder on the side and have a little bit less of a chance of you falling off the edge. Just keep in mind that these typically use more resources, so your inventory is going to be a little bit more used up by the resources required for these buildings. Tip number eight. One of my biggest tips for new players and frankly for experienced players that are starting a new game is to advance to coal power as soon as possible. Refilling your biomass burners, either the ones on your hub or the ones that you build in your base, it takes a lot of time and it's a very manual effort. But if you get to coal power as soon as possible, you can reduce all of that manual effort and all the time spent going and finding leaves, finding wood to create biomass for your burners. Tip number nine. You can gather slugs around the world to create overclocking crystals and overclock your miners. Overclocking structures vastly increases their power consumption in comparison to building additional buildings. But the best thing you can do is overclock your miners because your miners are one of your most limited resources. If you overclock your miners, you can get up to 250% of the normal resource that you would get from that mining node. And this allows you to vastly expand your capacity for building all of the items that you need in your base. You can check a miner rate table for the potential throughput. Just keep in mind that even with a pure node, you'll never be able to get more than 780 of a resource out of a node. And that's because the Mark V belts can only transport 780 resources per minute. Tip number 10. When you're overclocking a building, you can choose to set the clock speed percentage if you'd like, but even better than that is you can choose the target production rate by clicking on the number of parts per minute and setting that to exactly what you'd like it to. You don't have to use the slider to do this. You can choose exactly how many parts per minute you want a building to produce or you want a miner to mine out of the ground. Keep in mind, you can always overclock your buildings above their potential to create items. It's totally fine, and it doesn't come at too big of a power cost to your base. Tip number 11. This is just a general tip that I suggest people do. After you get access to Blade Runners and Jetpacks, make sure you craft additional pairs of these and put them in the storage box in your hub. If you die far away from your hub, the worst thing is running back to your death box with no Blade Runners or no Jetpack. It really makes getting there a struggle. So keeping an extra pair of these in your storage box in your hub means that if you die and you respawn in your hub, you'll be able to put those on and run back to your death box much quicker. Tip number 12, I touched on this in our top five tips for beginners, but multi-delete is one of the best tools you can use in your factory. If you press the F key to delete an item and you hold the control key down, you can select multiple items to delete, up to 50 items. You can also selectively choose items by tapping the control key when you're selecting different items in the world. And then hold down mouse one to delete the items that you've added up to your multi-delete list. This will save you a ton of time. And now as of update three, multi-delete only drops a single box. So you don't have to worry about creating 50 boxes if you delete 50 items without the space in your inventory to collect those items. Tip number 13, I love this one. When you are in build or dismantle mode, after pressing the F key, you can press the middle mouse button to copy whichever building your mouse is selected over. So you can really quickly build copies of your base by pressing the middle mouse button over a building and placing that building nearly instantly. And then pressing the middle mouse button over a belt, for instance, and being able to belt that building instantly. I love, love, love this feature. It's only shown in a tiny little tooltip on the screen, but it's such a big deal for building bases quickly. Tip number 14. You can generate passive coupons for the awesome shop just by hooking up a miner or a miner and a constructor directly to an awesome sink on resource nodes that you aren't currently using in your base. And in the meantime, you're gonna be generating coupons that you can use in the awesome shop. I often set up miners to an awesome sink locally in certain locations. If I'm not necessarily expanding to those locations just yet, and I'm generating those points for the coupons passively while I'm off expanding my base elsewhere. Tip number 15 is gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to managing your inventory. There are a whole bunch of different ways that you can manage the inventory between your character's inventory and storage boxes around the world. If you double click or shift left click, 
you can transfer a single stack of items from your inventory to a storage box and vice versa, or to any of your miners, constructors around the base. Control left click instead transfers all of the items of that type from your inventory to storage or vice versa. And this is really great if you wanna take out a bunch of concrete from a storage box, you can control click on a single concrete in that storage box and your inventory will be filled with concrete. Also a neat tip you might wanna know, if you hold control and drag a group of items over to the trash bin, it will trash all of that type of item from your inventory. This is helpful if you need to make a lot of inventory space and you aren't near somewhere that you could put this in the awesome sink, for instance. Tapping right click on a stack of items will split that stack in half. But if you hold right click, you can choose precisely how many items you wanna split out of a stack. Tip number 16. You can build splitters and mergers directly onto a belt if you'd like to, but they also snap to the end of conveyor belts and conveyor poles. It's a really great way to quickly place these down. The one thing I will caution you on is placing these at the end of vertical conveyor belts is a little bit iffy. There's a bit of clipping and it's not quite clear if the splitter or the merger has actually been connected properly, so I recommend against it. But you can definitely use this tip for snapping them onto belts and onto the end of belts as well. Tip number 17. There are a bunch of resources out there for you to find if you go exploring for them. And if you get access to these resources, you can create some really cool things. You can find Caterium, Quartz, Sulfur, and Bauxite all over the world. Caterium will unlock Blade Runners, which allow you to run faster. Upgraded Power Poles, which allow you to connect more power lines to the same pole. Smart Splitters, which open up a bunch of different building opportunities for you, including a really neat way to send excess resources to the Awesome Sink. You can see a tutorial of that here. And Caterium also, at the very end, unlocks a new potential energy source. So finding Caterium is really great. Quartz is going to unlock the map, which allows you to see the areas that you've been around the world, but most notably, it allows you to choose beacons to show up on the map and show up on your HUD. This is a really great tool for keeping track of where you'd like to expand your base out. Also, if you use beacons in combination with the map, you can actually place beacons at hard drive locations that you've collected, or even at hard drive locations that you haven't collected because you don't have the resources for them yet. And by using these, you can keep track of what you've explored and what you haven't explored yet. It's a really great exploration tool to find and collect all of those hard drives to unlock that research. Quartz also unlocks new vehicle designs, which I highly recommend you research. Sulfur is going to unlock new weaponry and explosives that allow you to explore the planet and gain access to new resources. And bauxite is going to be necessary for a really late tier technology, so don't worry about this one too much in the early game. Throughout each of these trees, you also gain access to inventory and tool belt expansions, so definitely keep an eye out for these resources and try to get access to them by placing miners on these nodes while you expand your base. Tip number 18, you can crouch slide in this game by pressing the C button while you're running using the shift key. Crouch sliding allows you to crouch under belts that are at the lowest level. So this is a really great tip for getting around a really crowded base sometimes. And also, if you jump after a crouch slide, your jump is higher than if you normally jump. So you can get to new heights depending on how you've built your base and designed it by using the crouch slide and jump. Tip number 19. If you're having a hard time defeating a difficult enemy, like one of the alpha spitters or an alpha hog, one tip that you can do, which is a little bit hacky, is you can drive a vehicle over that enemy. Now, driving a vehicle over an enemy doesn't deal damage, but what happens is if you place yourself correctly, you can actually trap them underneath the vehicle. And this can allow you to get some hits off with your sword or with one of your guns and take out the enemy that's causing you so much trouble. Tip number 20. The Satisfactory Calculator website is really great for planning a base. It can do some really neat and nifty save file editing if you want to do that, but the most useful aspect to me of this website is the ability to see where nodes are in the world and whether they are impure, normal, or pure. And this is really helpful for planning where you want to set up a new base or potentially where you want to move your base to where you can have access to more pure nodes. For your first playthrough, I wouldn't worry too much about this, but for future playthroughs, you might want to take a look at the Satisfactory Calculator website to see where you want to set up your first base. You don't necessarily have to start your base wherever it is that you spawn.
Those are my top 20 tips for satisfactory. I hope you all learned something from this video. If you did, let me know what your favorite tip from this list was, or if I missed something, what tip would you recommend to new players or to experienced players that you've learned in the game? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want more satisfactory content, I run a live stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Central European time. If you haven't checked it out, here's what you're missing. Otherwise, I will see you guys in our next video here on YouTube or on Twitch. See you soon. Oh my God, you guys are like slamming the save the game riders. Okay, here we go. We are gonna launch ourselves off of, quite honestly, the largest tower I have ever seen in my entire life. Is the power on? Not yet. Here we go. Awesome having you guys here. All this hard work for this moment. Let's do it! Oh! Hang on. I wanna- I wanna conserve the power. Or not! <laughs> oh my god. We can see how quickly we're going, I think, by how quickly our character launches back and forth. So you'll notice that they're going- they're increasing their speed faster and faster. Way over! This time we hit into the clouds! Oh, oh, okay, okay, below the clouds now? No way, are we gonna survive this? If we land in the- oh, no, we're not gonna land in the water, we're just gonna land right outside of it, aren't we? Right in this clip. Not gonna lie. We almost survived that. <laughs> we almost survived that. <laughs> I thought we lived. That would have been unbelievable. <laughs> but here we are just chilling. Chilling, having a great time. Relaxing against this, this rock here. Oh, man.